Welcome to my MOOC on Selective Readings in British and American Poetry. This is my fourth lecture, and the topic is We Buy a Love So Much Refined. I'll talk about John Dunn and his poem, A Valediction for Bidding Morning. This is the agenda I prepared for this lecture. I will start with poetry reading aloud exercise. And then I will introduce briefly the life of John Dunn. And before we do a close reading of Dunn's poem, A Valediction for Billy Morning, I would like to have a few words about metaphysical poetry. And after the close reading, I will have a few words about the themes of death, love, faith, and science in this poem. And I will end up this lecture with assignments for next week. Now let's well read aloud the poem together. A Valediction for Bidding Morning uh, by Jiang Dan. A Valediction for Bidding Morning. As virtuous men pass mildly away and whisper to their souls to go, while some of their sad friends do say, The breath goes now, and some say, No. So let us melt and make no noise, no tear floods nor sign tempest move. Twere profanation of our joys to tell the laity our love. Moving of the earth brings harms and fears, men reckoned what it did and meant. But tribulation of the spheres, though greater far, is innocent. Thou, sublunary lover's love, Whose soul is sane, cannot admit absence because it does remove those things which alimented it. But we buy a love so much refined that ourselves know not what it is. Interassured of the mind, care less eyes, lips, and hands to miss. Our two souls, therefore, which are one. Though I must go, endure not yet a breach, but an expansion like gold to every thing is beat. If they be two, they are two souls. Still twin and compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed food, makes no show to move, but does if the other do. And though it in the center sit, yet when the other far does roam, it leans and harkens after it and grows erect as that comes home. Such wilt thou be to me who must like the other food obliquely run. Thy firmness draws my circle just and makes me end where I began. Okay, now let's do the reading aloud again. And if you like, try to read after me. A Valediction for Billy Morning. As virtuous men pass mildly away, and whisper to their souls to go. While some of their sad friends do say, the breath goes now, and some say, no. So let us melt, and make no noise, no tear floods, nor sign tempests move. a profanation of our joys, to tell the laity our love. Moving of the earth brings harms and fears. Men reckon what it did and meant. But trepidation of the spheres, though greater far, is innocent. Thou, sublunary lover's love, whose soul is sense, cannot admit absence because it does remove those things which alimented it. But we buy a love so much refined that ourselves know not what it is. Interassured of the mind, care less eyes, lips and hands to miss. Our two souls, therefore, which are one, Though I must go, endure not yet a breach, but an expansion like gold to everything is beat. 
If they be two, they are two soul. A stiff twin compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show to move, but doth if the other do. And though it in the center sit, yet when the other far does roam, it leans and harkens after it, and grows erect as that comes home. Such will thou be to me, who must like the other foot obliquely run. Thy firmness draws my circle just, and makes me end where I began. This poem shows many features associated with 17th-century metaphysical poetry in general, and with John Donne's work in particular. It was written in 1611, when Donne, who was about to travel to France and to Germany, wrote for his wife this valediction. Uh, valley means farewell, a uh, diction, a speech. So it was a farewell speech. But the poem was not published immediately. Uh, it was actually published in 1633, two years after Dung's death, in a collection of his poetry called Songs and Sonnets. And in this poem, the speaker tenderly comforts his lover at their temporary separation wishing that they separate calmly and peacefully without tears or protests because their love is a holy love. So the poet argues in this poem that we by a love so much refined that ourselves know not what it is. Dan's love poems are often referred to as the religion of love. Uh, because he takes the love between his wife and him as sacred, uh, something divine, something holy, elevated above ordinary lovers' love. And because of the confidence their love gives them, they are strong enough to endure a temporary separation. Through metaphysical conceits in this poem, uh, the poet argues that the two lovers in this poem either possess a single soul and can never be divided, or have twin souls permanently connected to each other. A metaphysical conceit is a far-fetched metaphor or simile uh, in which the poet makes an unusual an uncommon comparison between two very unlike things. Dunn, in this poem, argues for the true love of the two lovers by comparing their two souls to the two legs of a drafting compass. According to the Oxford World English Dictionary, a compass uh, refers to an instrument for taking measurements and describing circle consisting in its simplest form of two straight and equal legs connected at one end by a movable joint. So with the conceit of a compass in this poem, the poet argues for the true love of the two lovers by comparing their souls to the two legs of a drafting compass, uh, which consists of two straight and equal legs connected at one end by a movable joint. Their separation, therefore, uh, doesn't mean a break between them. So it is not necessary to cry over the temporary separation. They are physically separated, but spiritually, they are always connected. <laughs>